Hi guys, it's Maddie Lee, and I'm here to talk to you about the changing ecology of medical practice in the late 1800s. In early American society, many physicians could not fully support themselves from medical practice. This was because most families could not afford to rely on physicians and therefore cared for sick at home. The indirect price associated with medical services far outweighed the direct physician's price. This indirect price included the cost of transportation, going to the doctor or sending someone to summon one, which meant also paying for the physician's transportation to the home. Even if one did have the money, physicians were often difficult to track down due to the lack of communication technology such as the telephone. Also included in the indirect price was the pay lost for time taken away from work, sometimes a full day's work. There was also little demand for hospitals at that time. The only people who went were those who did not have family to take care of them. However, in the late 19th century, the rapid growth of manufacturing, cities, more modern means of transportation, and the building of hard roads led to major changes in medical practices. The paid specialized labor of physicians became less expensive and less time consuming as the indirect fees became much less significant. Medical care was put within the income range of more people. This high mobility led to the development of more nuclear families and the number of persons per household decreased. There were fewer relatives available to care for the ill. With urbanization, families also began to dwell in apartments in cities and no longer had extra space for the treatment of sickness and childbirth. This opened the door for hospitals and physicians. They were able to relieve the household of obligations that interfered with employment. In conclusion, modernization beginning in the late 1800s shrunk the space for physicians to practice medicine and allowed them to be more efficient and focused on the overall care of each patient, both of which are still valued in the profession today. The question I leave you with is this. What developments do you see allowing physicians to become even more efficient in medical practice today?